Okay, well, let's, let's carve a spoon. And um, before we start, I'll just explain some of the equipment that I've prepared um, before we get going. So I always think it's really important, obviously, to stress safety. These are incredibly sharp tools. And whilst a lot of spoon carvers do, um, they, they will carve a spoon and hold it um, as they're working, I always try and promote the idea that the work is held very firmly and that you can use both hands to hold the tool. So both hands are out the way of the cutting edge. And this is going back to the significant six techniques, which you'll see um, in the description. Uh, there's a link for that below. So um, holding the tool in this way, in a fist position or a pinch position, both hands are on the tool. So we've got to find a way to hold this spoon in lots of different directions so it can be worked on and it stays nice and firm. And I've rigged up a little system to do that. Um, so I'll explain that now. So first of all, uh, we have our, let's remove our spoon. So first of all, I've just got a piece of timber. This is a piece of pine, which I've painted white. It just means that you can see the work a little bit more clearly. But this is important because as we're working, even if I dig into the, into the board, I'm not gonna damage my bench. It also means that you've got a bigger piece of timber to fix somewhere nice and, and firmly. I always prefer to stand when I'm working and the work is the same height as my elbow when I'm standing nice and tall. That stops me from bending over too much and hurting my back. But if you do prefer to sit down, you could have this board essentially on, on your knee. Um, it means that you've got a solid piece of something between this and your legs. <laughs> and, but also I've got a series of holes drilled in here and I'll show you what I've rigged up. So, so first of all, I have two pieces of cord. The first is just one length and in it I have done two loops. So let's put this here. There's two, two form two loops like that out of one piece of cord. The second piece is tied to a length of timber. Now I'm going to put my foot on that and you see how this is another loop but as I put my foot down obviously that's going to pull down. So when I thread this loop through that one this has a the, the first the one that's attached to the board has a slip knot on it so I can adjust the length and I'm gonna I'll put this through now so the cords fit through the hole in your board. Like that. And then essentially I can adjust that slip knot so that the, the, the pedal, if you like, is at an angle. And then when I put my foot on it, that's really locked in quite firmly. So I can adjust it, move it round, but at the same time, it's firm enough for me to be able to work on it with both hands and it's all, it just feels nice and secure and safe. So that's our little setup. Let's make a start to mark out our spoons. Okay, so we've got a nice sharp set of spoon carving tools. So um, you can get a dedicated set of spoon carving tools, or those same tools are in the larger comprehensive collection of 12. So with those set of three tools, make sure they're razor sharp. And there's again, there's a tutorial on how to do that. That'll be in the description below. I'll put a link for that for you. Um, so we've got nice sharp tools um, and I've got this lovely piece of walnut um, to make the spoon out of. I'd like to do a really big one, but I can't really make it fit on that piece of walnut. So we'll just do something nice and simple, just a plain spoon to start off with. Um, so we'll use that, that'll fit. 
uh, how do we mark it out? So this is just like a cardboard divider from a, a ring binder. And what I'll do first of all, I think it's only necessary to mark out half. You only need to really mark out half of the spoon and then we can fold it over and, and cut out, you know, you get an, an equal um, shape on both sides. I'll show you how though. So let's get a rule. So this is not a small rule. So I'll put a center line down. And so now let's just mark out the basic shape of our spoon. So I'm just really tracing that, which will give us a basic outline. So again, I've only done half, and then we can clean that up a little bit, or maybe we can change the, change the shape of it. We could make it a little bit broader there. We could give it a bit more of an interesting shape. Okay. So now what we will do is fold it down the line. So you get a nice flat. Okay. So now I'm going to cut the profile out with a pair of scissors. Okay, so here we have our half and then we can just fold it over and then create our second half. Okay, so here we've got our spoon template, uh, which is even on both sides. Actually, let's just round that off a little bit. I don't really like that pointy bit. There we go. So now we can mark that on our timber onto the walnut. Now, what we've got to be careful of is that, you see how we've got some cracks here in the timber. Obviously we don't want that in our spoon. So as we're using the, the timber, let's just make sure that we find a nice piece. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna go here. Let's go there. Worth pointing out actually that the grain is running this way, the lengthways of the spoon. Obviously the grain is at its strongest running lengthways. If I was to put that with the grain orientation going across the spoon, it would be very brittle and snap in its weakest point. So let's, the grain orientation is running lengthways. And now I'm just going to mark that onto my timber. Okay. So it's a little bit difficult to see so I might go over that with a marker pin. Now also thinking about this, we want some way of holding the spoon whilst I'm carving it. So why don't we give ourselves an extra bit of timber, top and bottom. Now I didn't leave myself much at the bottom, but that'll be enough. And if we angle that piece of timber in like that, the cord can sit in that. And that will give us a nice holding point while we're working, like a little dovetail. Okay, so now let's get this cut out. Um, I'm quite fortunate in that I've got a fret cutting machine or a bandsaw, um, but that's not to say um, that you can't do this with a hand saw. This is called a coping saw. Um, so essentially we can, by undoing the handle, 
you can change the you can change the angle of the blade. So these are relatively inexpensive. I think this was uh, about 20 New Zealand dollars, about 10 English pounds. And what that means is if you hold it in a vise, you can then cut out the profile of your, of your spoon. Uh, but I'm going to use my, my fretzel. Good as gold, that's held nice and firmly. All right, so mallet. Let's have a look at what we want to do. So there's our shape. So we need to, we need to shape this part down a little bit here. So let's make a start. I'll use tool number 11. Uh, we'll just cut down in that direction. Uh, walnut, hard as rock. <laughs> Um, I haven't made my life easy. Okay, and let's just move this little support. Uh, maybe as your first project, don't choose walnut. Yeah, walnut, not a great idea. <laughs> So what I'm doing is I have it in the fist position. I'm anchoring with this arm here and I'm sliding the tool. See how that's working? So can you see how I'm getting that nice shape? Carving short fibers to long and in this direction, short fibers to long. Let's shape this a little bit more in this direction. So again, if you want to learn these techniques, it's called the significant six techniques. And there is a link to that below in the description section. And it just runs through the fist position, the pinch position, always being anchored and sliding the tool. So you're getting a nice shape there now. So using tool number 10 now, which is a long bent tool, you can see how it's just giving me, it's allowing for that sweep here. And we'll start creating that spoon shape very soon in a little while. Right, so now let's do a bit of shaping on our handle. Uh, and of course, we don't need to make it exactly the same as this, it's just a little guideline. So it's nice to have quite a bit of shape. So let's take this area down here. So now I'm using the inside, the canal of the tool, of tool number 11, to just put, it's putting a slight radius on the, on the top of that handle there. So again, I'll just lower this area down here a little bit.
we're just getting a shape on the top surface and then we're going to start cleaning up the sides to make sure it's consistent. Now what I am looking for though is this point here and this point here we want to have needs to be equal heights on both sides. So you see pinch position sliding if this hand is anchored. Both hands are on the tool so that means that I'm nice and safe. Now this little mechanism is holding things nice and steady for us. Okay, how is that looking? So now why don't we start putting this nice dished effect in for the for the spoon. So this is where absolutely tool number 10 comes in, this nice long bent profile. And let's start create, creating a nice spoon shape. Again, held in the pinch position. Uh, my hand is anchored and I'm sliding that sliding the tool. Looks like Alfie the cat's just come in to join us. Again, it's really important to remember those cutting directions now. Um, I'm always cutting short fibres to long. Remember that uh, in the Significant Six technique video where we talk about uh, the bunch of drinking straws. Well, cutting short fibres to long. If we cut long fibres to short, it starts to break out. Okay, so we've got a nice spoon shape there. Let's use tool number nine to lead into that and give us a little canal on our way in. So we'll start that spoon shape right the way back from the handle. What we want to try and do is follow this, this shape a little bit. So we want to try and be able to follow that, that shape there. Right, again grain direction. I'm carving this direction, that direction as I go into the hollow. So here and in that direction. Notice I'm using two hands. So left hand to carve to the left side of the bench right hand to carve to the right hand side. in the inside of the canal of the tool of tool number 11 to start shaping this now.
So this is a CAMVAC. This is a CAMVAC. It's made, um, CAMVAC are made by Record Power in the UK. Amazing workshop vac systems. I think I'm going to lose this little holding point now. I'll get rid of that. Starting to get there. So I just want to get some of this bulk out of here. Can you see we've got quite a bit of bulk there? So let's just reduce that down a little bit. Now as we get into this fine edge, can you see how it's starting to chip a little bit because of the pressure possibly that I'm putting on? But that's okay because we're going to trim and perfect this shape a little later. We're just still roughing in the overall profile, but obviously we do need to be a little bit mindful of how much pressure we're putting on these edges. There. You could, I suppose, you could um, soften that with a piece of leather maybe, or some foam, like some sponge possibly, maybe that would help. But as long as we're gentle, I think that's the, I might try some sponge. So let's have a look what we got so far. Ooh. Well, it's getting there. It's a little bit rough. We've got to tidy these profiles up, but our overall shape is starting to, to form. So let's get it a little bit more consistent and equal on both sides. I get a steel rule and create a bit of a center line through there. Obviously what we're looking for is some sort of symmetry. So now I think I will get a little bit of foam or something to put underneath that just to protect it. The other thing is we definitely need to keep our hands clean because obviously any dirt on your hands is going to transfer onto the work. So I'm going to go and wash my hands, I'm going to go and get a piece of foam and I'll be back in a tick. Right, okay, so I have a little piece of foam now that might be gentler on these edges as I start to refine things. Now one of the interesting points that we really should consider is whether timbers are suitable for use with food and spoons. Now this spoon is purely intended for decoration purposes and walnut, certainly walnut, is known in some cases to be uh, quite toxic to animals uh, I know that if you put um, walnut shavings um, or dust, walnut dust in with animals, it can be very toxic for them uh, and also for your plants. So when we start making dust with walnut, we'll certainly be wearing a face mask. Um, but it is worth considering, you know, if you're using the timber for food and food preparation, that's certainly a consideration that you want to think about. You know, is the timber suitable to be around food? Okay, how are we looking? Woo, it looks like a spoon. So I'm just going to lose this, um, this lump on the end now. So let's see what we've got so far. I'm just going to put my pencil through here so I don't lose my loops. All right, so 
yeah, we've got a reasonable shape there. And of course, try and get most of it done with your carving tools before you start sanding. Um, because sanding's not, I'm not a fan of <laughs> sanding too much. Um, but of course, the more timber that you remove with your carving tools, the less sanding that you need to do. Um, so you see this area through here, I wouldn't mind getting the nice straight sort of having that come into a nice little ridge line on either side then it flattens out into this shape here and that's a bit flat and bulky so I might just scoop that and make it a little bit more hollow in that area so it's sort of a consistent thickness but we're getting there so let's just hollow this bit out first so again, I could use my long vent number 10. Create a little bit of a hollow in there. So just feeling that to make sure it feels nice and it's got a, an even consistency. So look at this shape here as it's coming in. So we've got two, two distinct ridge lines just coming together. Not bad. So we've got a nice sort of shape in here, which we can refine as we go. Now for this final bit where we, it is helpful to hold the work as you're carving it, always make sure Again, we're anchoring the tool and we're cutting away from the hand that is holding the work. So I'm not cutting towards myself, I'm cutting away. Okay, I think we might be getting close to the sanding stage now, just to clean that up. So we've got our profile pretty well in that ridge line, whether you can see that ridge line here. So this ridge line here, just want to make sure we keep that. Can you see this shaping through here? Okay, <clears throat> so I've got a piece of 60 grit 180 um, and we'll see how we get on with that. Um, any wood dust, not good for you. Um, so if possible, wherever possible, always use dust extraction. So I have a Camvac, it's a record power machine. When I'm sanding, what I will do is I'm going to put this hose here and that will just allow the dust to go straight away. I'm also going to use um, a face mask so walnut in particular can be a bit of an irritant so um, definitely with that and again walnut always check this is purely decorative it's not going to be used for food um, but always check the suitability of the timber that you're using for any you know if you're going to be using it with food right so i've got dust extraction coming here face mask and we'll just start with a, a coarser grit all right well <laughs> that's our heavy grit done and you can see that it's really taken all of those lumps and bumps off and uh, it's got a nice delicate feel, particularly here um, underneath the handle where you hold it, so that's quite nice. And um, right, so I'll go to a, a lower grit now, that was 60, I'll go to 180 and we'll probably go another grade after that. Okay, so now I'm going to go to 600 grit.
Okay, so here we have a spoon. It is um, the same sort of size. You can see we've got a similar sort of uh, style, but we've got a nice, a nice little ridge line coming down the back into this nice open end, which feels quite nice to touch. And um, a very nice little decorative spoon. Okay, so a little bit of research tells me that a really nice finish to put on spoons is linseed oil. I don't have any, um, so I'm gonna race out and go and get some. All right, so um, mission accomplished, I now have some raw linseed oil which I'm going to put on my nice little decorative spoon. Um, make sure all dust is out of the way. I've got some kitchen towel here which I can use just to give us a nice clean surface. Also got a soft cotton rag. I don't think we need to put a lot of this stuff on. I can't say I've used linseed oil before. So I shall shake it up. Now with any finish, it's not a good idea to get it on your fingers. Just a little bit on this rag. And let's see how we go. Whoa, look at that. That really does bring the grain out. Wow. Oh, that's looking very nice. 